Hey Stash fans, welcome back to the Mully Stash Show. It's Friday at about 5.20 p.m. And I am going to start probably a three-part mini-series on fixing my motorcycle. So tonight, since it's a dirty girl, we're going to just clean it up real quick. And then tomorrow we're going to take the broken parts off. I'm going to show you around and then we'll go to the dealer and order the parts. And then for the third part of the series, I will reinstall the parts. What's broken is the speedometer cable is actually broken. It broke a few weeks ago. It was the outer cable and it was repaired and now the inner cable broke which is not repairable. So I'm just going to go ahead and replace the whole part this time. Now even though this bike breaks down a little bit it actually has only ever left me stranded once and when I bought the bike the gentleman I bought it from had it sitting outside in his backyard in the Arizona sun for three years without riding it. So a lot of the rubber and the plastic parts were rotted off or dried up. So that was the majority of the, the problem with the bike. When I got it, I had to change all the fuel lines because they, they blew, blew out on the side of the road. I was able to walk to a store, get the parts and fix it there on the side of the road. I had to replace all the brake lines because that ruptured. Um, and then there's different fuel lines that I actually had to disassemble half the bike to get to. That wasn't fun. Replace those. I had to have the bike actually towed to the dealer to bleed the brakes because they have like eight liter valves and it's a, it's a servo assisted linked brake. So if I hit either the front or the back brakes, all the brakes go off. They're ABS, which by the way, doesn't work because the dealer um, forgot to put fluid in the rear master cylinder when they did the brake job. So air is in the system. So the ABS doesn't work because of the air light going on. But the brakes work fine. I just can't turn the ABS on. Um, other than that, I've changed the tires. Those were rotted off. And then just a few little things like the speedometer cable. The only time I was actually left stranded was when the battery died. And that's taken care of. But now the speedometer cable is broken again. It is rideable. But thanks to a guy I've been following on YouTube, Motonocity, uh, I got the idea to actually use my smartphone as a speedometer. So I downloaded an app. I took off the bracket I had on my pedal bike to hold the smartphone and I mounted it to the tractor this morning. So this is my bike. I call her the tractor because she sounds like a tractor and she pulls like a tractor. And when you go around the corner, if it's in third gear, it just sort of chugs you right along. Here you can see the bracket that I used to hold my phone. Here you can see the broken end of the speedometer cable, so that's what we got to fix. Actually a really cool bike. Probably been my dream bike for a long time. So even though stuff is broken, I still like her. So let's get her cleaned up and ready for the prom. The road is a dirty place to be. <clears throat> Some things I like about this bike is that it's shaft drive. Uh, BMWs are supposed to be reliable. And everybody tells me when I go to the dealers to get parts or whatever, and granted it's really only the BMW salesmen that say it, and they convince you to buy a bike and you say no, that you already have one, well then they, they still try to be your friend and they tell you how these bikes can get a quarter million miles on them. 
I don't know. Maybe the engine, but the rest of the bike, I'm not really too impressed. However, that could be that Arizona sun. It, it, it kills things, it kills components. So, I don't know. Things I don't like about the bike, and maybe this is BMW in general, but I really don't like that if I go to buy a component, I have to buy everything separate. Uh, so that's where they get you. Parts, parts are very, very expensive. Don't care for that. And I don't care that I'm always working on it. So again, it might be a BMW thing. I don't know, this is my first BMW. I've had a lot, a lot, a lot of Yamahas. Had some Hondas, had a Kawasaki. Kawasaki doesn't really count. It was a $30 dirt bike I got. It was fine, nothing great, and it was $30. A lot of, a lot of Yamahas that treated me really well. And I really want to like this bike more than I do since it's one of my dream bikes. But I am upset that it's always something. So I don't know if that's just a thing because half the internet says these are the best bikes ever made and you can put hundreds of thousands of miles on them and then the other half of the internet says these bikes are more well any bike made in Europe I guess is more work than it's worth. And for those of you who think we're recording here we're trying to be famous. Alright. And for... I'm playing. Uh, for those of you who think motorcycles and porn go good together, I can do a little bit... I can do a little bit of softcore porn here for you. Alright, and since it's actually sort of chilly outside, that sucks, I'm going to chamois. So, it turns out we're having technical difficulties here. It says to take off, you turn this and you pull this. So I'm guessing to put it back on, it would do the same. I don't know. I do remember, like, take off whenever I work on the bike, and I had the same problem trying to get it on, so... Hmm. Turns out we gotta lift up a little bit on the box. Put that handle in. Whew. So Stash fans, this is the end of vlog 16. Make sure you hit like, make sure you hit subscribe. Uh, follow me on Twitter at Molly Stash, and tomorrow we can start disassembling the bike, and then we can go to the dealer. It's gonna be really fun. Maybe not work on the bike, but once we get to the dealer, they're gonna have really, really cool things to look at. Really excited about that. And then we can order the parts after we're done having our fun at the dealer. And then we can probably have some more fun. Um, so that will be tomorrow. So we will see you then.